Welcome back to Big Hue Art. Here's the moment of truth that I've been waiting for all week. We are prepping the big canvas for an epoxy. So just a couple things to go over. First you do the Dawn dish soap uh, with warm water and I use a microfiber cloth to get all the little particles off of the canvas. Um, it's tricky with the sparkles that we added because you don't know if there's silicone in it and if there is it's going to mess up the epoxy. So you let that dry overnight. And then what I did, and I'll show you right here. All right, it's kind of hard to see, but what I've done is I padded the back with cardboard. So I just reuse um, cardboard from different boxes. I pad the back of that canvas because what's gonna happen with the weight of the epoxy, it's gonna perhaps bow in the center and you don't wanna do that, that would wreck your canvas. So that's one hack I do putting the cardboard behind and just kind of using it as a pillow. And then another interesting hack is I put tape along the edges of the canvas. I don't know if you can see it all, but basically what it does, if there's gonna be a drip, it's not gonna run to the back of the canvas. And perhaps if it runs on the back of the canvas, that's gonna prevent it from lying properly on the wall. So I put some tape on the edges right here just to help out to uh, avoid those drippings. So we're gonna get started shortly. I'm about to mix my epoxy. Okay, let the mixing begin. A couple things you need to have in place before you start. You need a protected surface. So I use garbage bags. I use the garbage bags for cleanup afterwards, knowing that I'm going to get epoxy everywhere and everywhere I get it, it is staying. I cannot get rid of it. I have myself a set of gloves. The gloves are gonna help keep the epoxy off of myself. Once you get it on your hands, it's really hard to get off followed by stirring sticks. Stirring sticks are important. You wanna have at least one stirring stick per container that you are mixing. You don't want to use the same stick in each container. You have a hardener and the resin itself, so mixing those two could be kind of disastrous. Again, each um, element, the hardener and the resin, need to have its own cup for mixing. You're gonna take uh, equal parts of the resin and equal parts of the hardener when you are creating that mixture. I have a torch and the torch will be used to get rid of any bubbles that are in the epoxy when I put it on the canvas. So heating that epoxy on the canvas will get rid of those bubbles. And then there's my resin and my hardener. I got them on Amazon. That seems to be the fairest price. And I use equal parts resin equal parts hardener in my mix to create my epoxy. So as you can see here, I am going to mix the resin with the hardener. What you have to do is you do one per one. So I have one cup of resin and then I mix it with one cup of hardener. It's really important to keep the mixture equal or you're going to mess up the epoxy results. So I think I used four actual cups of each putting them into the larger container and mixing thoroughly. So it's going to take you a few minutes to actually mix the uh, mixture together equally um, because the hardener wants to harden quickly. So you just thoroughly mix the two parts together.
Normally, most of the time when I finish a painting, I use a poly acrylic finish, um, which is usually around $35 for half a pint. But knowing that I wanted this to look like glass as a finish finishing product, I went for the art resin and that's a little bit more expensive to be honest. Um, I personally like the results better but it's all about your comfort zone. So the art resin usually runs you for um, about $180 and that is a half a gallon or uh, 1.89 liters of each the resin and the hardener. So I'm putting the mixture onto the canvas and there's a couple if for you veterans out there, you're seeing that I'm doing it outside. Now that is taking a chance because there's elements that you can't control. Um, for example, bugs. So if a bug lands in this, then basically I'm going to have to sand it down and re epoxy that whole area. I'm pretty confident because of the weather conditions that um, I'm going to make out okay. What will happen after I put the epoxy on and torch it, getting all the bubbles out, I'm actually going to tent it, meaning it will go in the garage, the canvas itself. I will put a plastic covering over top of it in a tent like fashion so no dust particles can land in the epoxy while it's drying but again I am taking a chance doing this outside the only issue is I, I couldn't do it inside it, it's just too big of a canvas another issue with doing it indoors I have a border collie and she is the most amazing creature ever but for those of you that have a dog, you know that they want to be right beside you, cheering you on at every second of the day. And uh, with my collie, she would legitimately destroy this piece with her dog hair. Not intentionally, of course, but it would just happen. It was bound to happen. So outside I am trying to plug away at this, moving the epoxy around on the canvas, trying to get it even. And that's not the easiest thing to do with a 48 by 60 canvas, but plugging away as I go, trying to make sure everything is covered before I start torching. All right, some good advice to give is when you see a bubble, torch it right away. I kind of waited a little too long for some of these. It worked out great, actually, I cannot complain, but have that torch ready to go anytime you see a bubble and just try to attack it right away. Another thing that's a great uh, piece of advice is as you're going around your canvas, constantly bring your stir stick or, or a popsicle stick and touch up those edges and corners because the epoxy really wants to uh, drip down and if you don't get them in time you're going to have drip marks not on the back of your canvas because we took care of that with the uh, tape but you could definitely end up with them on the sides of your canvas and as you can see below there are some drip marks in the front right hand side that I'm going to have to take care of to make sure that it is all nice and even. I know this is on speed frame, but one of the toughest and most challenging things about using epoxy is that you're going to go around and you're going to see different blemishes here and different bubbles there. And I think I legitimately walked around this canvas for 10 to 15 minutes, just making sure I had all the bubbles, making sure I had all the drip marks so that when I went to tent it and for it to dry, I wouldn't wake up in the morning and have one of those terrible surprises that nobody likes to talk about and that would be a big bubble in the center of the canvas. So here you see me just constantly touching up different areas, making sure things are even and I spent a lot of time just 
torching over and over again just to double check. Obviously, it being such a big canvas, I didn't want um, any little blemishes that would become a focal point. I use my camera at the end to go over the canvas and videotape, but it also really helps me find different pockets of um, things that I need to work on. So you can see that little bubble there that I need to go back and grab. Um, so what I would do right now is do a quick videotape of what the canvas looks like and then replay it and it's going to help me make it better. This is a pic of right after I have poured. Now I'm taking it to tent and dry overnight. But I want to show you comparison between the two. So this is the night of. This is the day after. It's really hard to get a picture that really portrays how beautiful it looks because there's always shining in the background. You could almost see my figure in that picture. My videography skills do not do this painting justice. There's so much happening. The cells almost make it look like it's bubbling off the page, which gives it so much character. And I think this is one of my most favorite pieces so far. I just wanna thank you for taking the time to share this with me. Thank you for supporting Big Hue Art. I have a couple more giant canvases on the go and if you like what you see please take the time to hit that like button and subscribe for more from Big Hue Art. Thanks for watching.